people are telling me that this is going to be their first game each against a live competition. Yes, yes. Uh, they said that they're ready and ready to win and ready to battle today against each other. Uh, Jamaica, you know, being coached by Huntley Anderson um, and managed by Jerry Bunswick. And, uh, you know, they said today there's good rivals between the two and that they kind of play a similar style. And Jamaica today is actually going to change their style of play so that they can take an advantage throughout the game. So what style they're going to play? Well, today they're going to play not an expansive rugby, but more of a ground and pound them with the forwards up the centers, you wow. know, with their eight man uh, coming in as the captain for Jamaica. All right, and here comes our national anthems. Our two national anthems of Guyana and Jamaica, the first game in the trophy division of this 2016 Rugby America's North Championship. Our referee for today is Gavin McCandless. The 20-year-old from Philadelphia is kind of making a name for himself, a B-panel referee, has been over to New Zealand to train uh, as well to become, he's actually stopped playing uh, in rugby and uh, is full-time in rugby refereeing. The starting lineups for today for Guyana, uh, the number one prop, Damar Haynes, number Number two, hooker, Mark Griffith. Number three, tight head prop, Shaquan Williams. Number four, James Osborne as lock. The f number five lock is Shaquille Horatio. Number six, blindside flanker, Elton Crawford. Number seven, open side flanker, Glenroy Poole. The eight man, Kurt Hunt. Hunt. Number nine, Scott Garraway. Number 10, outside half, Aquino James. The winger, Jonathan Garrett. The captain and number 12, the center, is Daniel uh, Diabru. Number 12, Michael Barrow. The 14, the winger, Elroy Gibbons. And the fullback is Kevin Wills. As for the Jamaica starting lineup, we have our loose head to Jay Wallace. The hooker, Adrian Brown. Twins at tight head prop and lock, Matthew Patterson. Excuse me, Matthew Patterson's tight head. The two locks are twins, Jamel Watson and Jaleel Watson. And I don't know which one's older. Chris, I am a twin myself, and I'm the older one. I just want everyone to know that. Your brother must have got the better looks. Right, on. he must have. I am seven minutes older. Now, for the number eight, Odane Laylar. His nickname is Layla, and he is the captain today. The nine, uh, Mikel Facey. Number 10 is Adrian Christie. Your winger, number 11, Ronaldo McCarthy. The 12, the center inside, Kwame Green. Number 13 outside center is Mark Simpson. The winger, Miguel Facey. 
uh, a, a, a uh, brother of the number nine, Mikel Facey. The uh, fullback is Michael Beckford. And we have uh, three substitutions, Stephon White, Shamar Henry, and Ricardo Vickers. As we get underway here, to start off, we have Jamaica in the green, and we have Guyana in the yellow. Excuse me, I have that wrong. Jamaica is in the yellow, and Guyana is in the green. So we have Guyana in green, and Jamaica in the yellow. Starting off with a couple rucks here. See if they can get the ball out wide. Nice pass out wide. Great tackle by Jamaica. Looks like Guyana is trying to move the ball very wide and trying to force Jamaica to make mistakes real early. It's a good hard running by Guyana at first. Rolling over in the ruck. Penalty to Guyana. And they're going to start off early. First cup minute in, they're going for posts. Upon talking to Jerry Benswick uh, today for the manager of Jamaican Rugby Union, uh, he said, you know, uh, these kids, you know, U19s, uh, and some of them are not even close to 19, are really excited to be out here today representing their country, especially playing rugby. Um, uh, he also said that rugby is predominantly played in Kingston as of now. So that's where a group of these young players come from, from Kingston, Jamaica, the capital of Jamaica. Well, Jamaica is down by three because Guyana, uh, Guyana, excuse me, just got uh, points on the board. That's three to nothing, Guyana, as we're in the first two minutes of this game. 35-minute halves will be playing today. Once again, this is the first game of the trophy division of the 2016 Rugby Americas North Championship from beautiful... Miramar, Florida, just north of Miami. So that ball is not 10. Let's see what uh, the referee's going to do. Oh, he said it did go 10. It'll be a line out to Guyana. Jamaica recovering the line out. And what you said, Chris, with their ground and pound, they're, gonna, they're keeping it in the pack a lot. We're starting to see that right off here. It's a bit obvious in, uh, on the size of the force that they uh, you know, have in there. Uh, this time for the, the Jamaican side. Uh, they said they definitely made some changes in their lineup and uh, definitely focused on the forwards, uh, big and heavy boys. Right. Boys running up straight the middle. You know, I, I've seen the Jamaican team several years, and you're right, this is the biggest I've ever seen them. Usually the, the challenge is sevens, they're awesome, but 15s, they lack the size to compete on an international level. But it looks like they're doing so okay, okay so far. Definitely agree. Little give and go there right off the, the ruck there with a big, looks like the uh, the prop coming through. Yeah, it seems like Jamaica right now is really trying to control this game, playing just off the fringes, playing that, you know, the pound the ground with the, uh, with the big boys up there and just trying to suck in the defense. As you can see right now, they're running an expansive rugby out to the winger, number 14. 
Breaking uh, it out. Got some really good wheels. Right. Breaking it out wide. Uh, that's only the second time they spun the ball out wide. And they've always had speed. Jamaica has, has been obviously very fast um, with the country being from, Usain Bolt being from, uh, but they've never had the size to compete in a 15-style game. And so we're really seeing a, a different change in, in tactics here and uh, maybe something that will uh, wear down uh, Guyana and uh, help pay off today. Yes, let, let's see how they, they respond. But as you can see, Guyana, the big guys are just staying outside and not really taking all the, the brunt of the uh, the quick uh, tap and goes and the quick uh, offloads to the forwards. So let's see what kind of how Guyana can respond back to this one. Not releasing penalty on, Guy, on uh, Guyana, not releasing the tackler, or the ball carrier, excuse me. So Jamaica is going to go for points here. They're about, uh, I would say, about 10 meters out. Uh, it's going to be far, a little bit far left. You're going to have to angle this, this kick in. But let's see how it goes. Five minutes in to the game here. Uh, the score is three to nothing, Guyana. Don't forget, if you want to follow us, you can always hashtag Ran Super Week on Facebook and Twitter. Kick is up and did not meet the mark. We'll have a 22 drop for Guyana. Short kick by Guyana. A fortunate knock-on on that one right. by Jamaica. So, Chris, I had to educate myself on the geography of exactly where Guyana is. Yes. Uh, and it is on the South American uh, mainland, and it is right beside Venezuela to the right. Okay. So I did not know that. I did not know that. Uh, they have about 750,000 people in the country, and they have eight middle and high school teams and so that's wow. where they have selected uh this national side from those eight teams they have about a thousand players uh adult kids and adults that play rugby in guyana okay great pass out wise a good tackle by jamaica a good release let's see if they can hold on to it looks like advantage for jamaica knocked forward by guyana That's so a hard luck for Guyana on that, on that right. play. So knock forward by Guyana. Uh, Jamaica's going to have the, the scrum down here. One to watch for uh, from the Jamaican side, I see the captain, Odana Layla. He's only 18 years old. Layla. That's his nickname, Chris. Layla. Layla. Uh, is that what they call him? That's what they call him. Well, Layla. This, well, they said he's the one to look for. He's got his first cap uh, some months ago playing um, in the uh, World Cup qualifiers for Jamaica. Oh, wow. Um, okay, so he played for the men. Mad side. Okay. And so uh, he got selected up. So uh, that's, that's, that's the number one. eight, right? Number eight okay. for Jamaica side. Ball is out. Guyana gets the ball. Have a mall going on here. Let's see what they do with it. Tackles down and Ruck is formed. Let's see what they do, Guyana, right here. If they play the same style of rugby as uh, Jamaica, collapsing the defense. Knocked forward by Guyana off the pass from the Ruck. Scrum down, Jamaica. So, uh, I did 
I, I talked to Jerry uh, Benswick, the manager for the Jamaican team, and he told me that uh, the first 10 minutes is going to be the deciding factor in this game. They they have been sticking to their guns with a style of, of play that uh, Coach Huntley Anderson, you were saying that you know they want to play that that uh, crash ball, you know, right off the pack, pound, ground and pound, uh, and they have been doing that. But uh, he said be be on the lookout for the first 10 minutes. And to remind you, this is the first games that these two teams have played against uh, each other. They've had scrimmages, but this is the first game. So you're going to see a lot of cobwebs coming out here. Nice step. Right. Jamaica had a couple good passes going. Got it out wide, but uh, incidental knock on there. And it will be a scrum down, Guyana's ball. Now, Chris, we do know that you uh, are from Jamaica. Yes, that is correct. I was so, born in the States. Okay. But uh, my lineage is Jamaican. Okay. Yes. All right. It runs in my blood. So I want to make sure your commentary has no favoritism towards Jamaica. Oh, of course okay. it does. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> we don't want biased broadcasters here. No, no. Okay. But it's, it's good to see that Jamaica and Guyana countries like this are, are actually competing on this level for rugby and especially uh, trying to make the World Cup status as well as get in the Tier 1, you know, premieres for rugby around the world. So it's good. It's good to see a presence from these countries and especially my home, t my home love, my own home, home line, island, Jamaica. Ooh, a little bit of running backwards there. Yeah, we have obstruction. Uh, you cannot run behind your own player in rugby. That's more like a block you would have in American football. So that is a penalty to Jamaica. Looks like he's going to try to find touch here. And he finds touch. That's a penalty for Jamaica. So they will have the line out. So this is the first game in the trophy division of the 2016 Rugby America's North Championship. Now you have two divisions. You have a cup division and you have a trophy division, and they are decided by last year's top six standings. So the top six teams of in the RAN will be uh, delegated to the cup division, and that will be the, the outright title. And then the trophy division are the lower teams uh, to – go ahead and once you win that trophy division then you move up to the actual cup division so i was i was talking to uh chris i was talking to guyana and uh their manager uh his name's john lewis and he was saying this is the first time in four years that they have been back to the rugby america's north championship and you were telling me jamaica what is it they weren't here last year but they were here the year before that is that is correct so a lot of times in the in the RAN championships, you will see teams that, uh, for one reason or another, were unable to make it for, for a certain venue, maybe after a year or a couple years. And so once they come back, typically they are relegated to the trophy division. And then once they make their way through there, then they move back up to the cup division. So in the trophy division, we have Guyana, we have Jamaica, and the Bahamas. Guyana keeping possession right now. Really, Jamaica Good. put a lot of pressure Good on pressure right now. Coming through, the pressure has worked off. They have a try, Jamaica. Really good possession. Really Great. good pressure Absolutely. from Jamaica. Great pressure coming right up in their face of Guyana. They could not handle it. Grab the ball, Jamaica does, and dots it down for the try. Right beside the post should be an easy conversion. And the point after is good. So now we have a lead change. Jamaica on the board, seven, and Guyana, three. Five, excuse me, uh, 14 minutes into the first half. So we're roughly about halfway through the first half. We played 35 minute halves here. 14 minutes in, the score Jamaica, seven, Guyana, three. 
know the Jamaican Rugby Union and Guyanese Rugby Union, it's just you got to give credit to them really working hard to bring rugby across the board in their countries. And I just love the enthusiasm by all players, even the coaches and managers, on just, just keeping rugby alive and, and growing the sport around the world. Well, it is a hot one today here uh, in Miramar. Uh, at Viscaya Park, just north of Miami. It's 92 degrees, uh, and the heat index feels about 102. Then again, both of these countries are from the Caribbean, so it shouldn't affect them too much. As we see a little back and kick forth uh, kicking battle going on here. A knock on by Guyana. Scrum down Jamaica. So, Chris, I was talking to John Lewis, the manager of Guyana, and he was telling me that 17 of their kids, it's the first time that they've gone, they've come to the United States. And I asked them what their, their biggest uh, uh, eye-opening experiences were, and they said, he said, just the sheer size of the place, the overpasses, all the traffic, you know, all the buildings, it's something that they massive. are. Massive. Yes. Massive. Something that they are not used to uh, via their home country of Guyana. Yeah, it's something I had to get used to, too, when I uh, came over here back to the States, you know, just used to, you know, living in Jamaica and you get to walk everywhere. Here, you know, transportation, you get bus, train, plane. Right. That was a penalty by the number nine from Guyana. He was offside, so Jamaica has a penalty. Looks like they're going to kick for touch here. And they did not find the sideline. Jamaica's going to clear it out. It stays in bounds. Oh. Ref saw something that we yep. didn't see. G Jamaica was off sides oh. on that kick. So when you kick the ball, if you're in front of the kicker, you have to uh, retreat behind the kicker until he passes you. And so that's what happened. Guyana, they were in front of their kicker. So now they're going to use the big man to bring it up. Is that the prop? Number three. Yeah. Tidehead is going up. Matthew Patterson. Like we said earlier, Jamaica's just going to try to control at the fringes. Definitely by grounding a pound and give, giving the big boys a chance to run it up and collapse that defense. Another one to Patterson taking it up. You know, Chris, I really like saying Patterson taking it up. I think so. I yes, think right. so. He's my brother from another mother, and he is getting a workout here in the first half. The ground and pound, they are sticking to it, Jamaica. They're changing their style up for this tournament. The first, first time they've ever done or utilized a ground and pound offense. Yeah, just relying on speed so much. You know, today they changed it up and definitely have a different look. Hopefully during the week they'll change it up too as well with different combinations uh, with the competition to come. Spinning the ball wide. Their outside center taking it up. Good defensive pressure by Guyana. Unfortunate turnover on that one. Referee's playing advantage of the knock on. Let's see if Guyana can make anything out of this. Spinning it wide. A little bit of sloppy play here at the beginning of this match. Uh, once again, these teams have never uh, had an official match. They've always had some scrimmages. So you will see uh, it take the first half to kind of get used to each other and uh, uh, get used to their opponent. But taking a look, Chris, at, at these packs, it is unusual to see Jamaica having a larger size, having a yes. bigger size than, than the, their opponent. Yes, and I think most of it is just credited with the coaches and different styles that's coming in. Jamaica wanting to qualify for the World Cup 15s as well, you know, looking forward to making an impact in that in that division. So you, You're right. They've always been a competitor in uh, sevens rugby because of their speed, and now they want to take the step up for 15s. Good tackle by Guyana there. Oh, yeah. 
He had his hands on the ground in the rock. That is a penalty. You cannot have your hands down. You have to support your own weight by your feet yes. and not your hands. Penalty. Good call by the referee, 100% keeping him out of, out of trouble. Penalty to Guyana. All right, a line out to Guyana. They're attacking in Jamaica's 22. Kind of a back and forth game so far, Chris. Yes, it definitely is. You can see that both sides play the similar styles with the ground and pound using the floors to, you know, collapse the defense. But uh, definitely, uh, it could go either way today. 7-3, first half, 20 minutes in right here. Jamaica having the lead over Guyana. Jamaica stealing the line out. Clearing the kick. Not very far. Let's see what happens. Oh. Good defense by Guyana. A knock forward by Jamaica. So Guyana will have a scrum down right at the 22 of Jamaica. And we'll pause right now for a water break. You are watching the first match in the trophy division of the 2016 Rugby America's North Championship. Guyana versus Jamaica. Jamaica on top right now, 7-3, to three, 21 minutes into the first half uh this great match so far and chris what have you what have you seen so far in this first half between these two great countries uh, especially with jamaica between the two teams they're really trying to just break off those fringes we're pounding down the forwards uh attacking and trying to control the game and the pace of the game and the tempo but uh you know it's, it goes either way i think jamaica has a good advantage just just by using the big boys up at front and uh, I think it could go either way uh, come here shortly after their first water break. Don't forget, if you want to follow us today, just hashtag Rand Super Week on Facebook and Twitter. And this is a super week, not just a super day. We're in day two of the Rand Super Week. Tomorrow we have a double header coming your way. Four o'clock in Pool A from the Cup Division. It's the first game for the Cayman Islands. We'll see how they stack up against the Turks and Caicos. They did. Uh, the Turks and Caicos had their first game yesterday against Mexico, and it was 79 to nothing loss. So they're looking to bounce back uh, from that game in the second one of our doubleheader tomorrow, six o'clock. The first game for Trinidad and Tobago as well against Bermuda. Bermuda did take the loss against USA South yesterday, 41 nil. So they will be looking to bounce back as well. As we look forward into Tuesday, Jamaica and the Bahamas will be playing. Then on Wednesday, Mexico and the Cayman Islands. And then the second one of our doubleheader on Wednesday is USA South versus Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, the finals are going to be on Saturday. We have a full slate of games for you on Saturday. So once again, the whole week here at Rugby Super Week, Vizcaya Park in Miramar, Florida, just north of Miami. As we're getting our way back onto the pitch, you will see the game starting back after the water break. We'll have a scrum down to Guyana right at the 22 of Jamaica. And this is the farthest they've really been in besides the line out earlier. They lost that line out. So we'll see what they do here on the scrum down, Chris. Jamaica does have the size in the scrum down and the scrum here and they're pushing. Nope. Driving in from the scrum and drive, instead of driving through, that's going to be a penalty for Guyana. Yes, Jamaica just needs to be, you know, disciplined on that end. You know, they have the size and they have the strength, so I definitely think that played a factor in it, that they knew they could overcome them. So they just need to just focus and stay disciplined when it comes to those set pieces. Guyana electing to go for points. Yeah. 
Kick is up, and it's good. Guyana two for two on penalty kicks and narrowed the deficit just to one now. Jamaica seven, Guyana six, 22 minutes into the first half. Yeah, like I said, we got a match here today. Definitely same, similar styles. And uh, let's see what we can do. You know, always kicking for points always can help you out at the end. So basically we've seen, we haven't seen a lot of offense from either of the two sides, but they've been taking advantage of opportunities presented them off of penalties and of turnovers from the other team. Yes, no, you're 100% right. It seems like it's been going back and forth all day with different mistakes. Getting a little breezy here at Vizcaya Park. The wind going from right to left on your television screen. Guyana having the wind. But Jamaica, Jamaica nice, nice pressure. Yes, very good pressure from Jamaica so far. And Jamaica making defense turn into offense with a turnover. Driving, driving Jamaica, controlling the line of scrimmage here. Pick and go, pick and go, and it has worked. It has worked for Jamaica. Another try for Jamaica. Very good, very good by turning over the ball, forcing the turnover, and then being aggressive right away off the kickoff, kick off, and then continuously giving the pressure all the way down to guy and forced them a turnover, and then ended up to uh, a try. Great example of what offense turns into defense turns into offense currently 12 to 6 right now waiting awaiting the extra point so for those of you who are new to rugby if you're just watching you have a friend or family that's that's participating in this game today wherever you score the try wherever you physically touch the ball down that's where you kick the extra point so once you run across the 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 try line or the end zone, you have to run over and go behind the post to kick it in front of the post. Now, notice he didn't hear, so he's going to have to kick it in at an angle. And be a kicker myself, these are very challenging kicks. And it is good. He needed every bit of that kick to get through, but it is good. Way to go. Nice. So, yes, there is a visual illusion here because we're looking at two posts. We're looking at the, the rugby post, and then right behind it are the football post. But uh, that is good. It is 14 to 14-6 Jamaica, 25 minutes into the first half here. And both of the tries, Chris, it seems that have been coming off the defense turned into offense for Jamaica versus penalty kicks for I Guyana. Yes, I, I would agree 100%. Just like we said earlier, a lot of pressure by the Jamaican defensive team. And uh, we, there's Jamaican defensive force. And that's the military uh, force down in Jamaica. So they, they represent it very well right now, the JDF. Knocked forward by Jamaica in the ruck here. So we'll have a scrum down Guyana. And uh, since we, we are having Jamaica here play, I have uh, playing here, I, I have to say at least to you, Chris, Jamaica me crazy, man. Okay. I Is that authentic? Is That's that authentic. fairly authentic? That's what very I, authentic. Would I sound like a Jamaican? You sound like, like a tourist. <laughs> okay. You I want did? a cocktail or something? Okay. All right. Yes. Oh, you got rum runners? Rum runners. Hello, you rum, your runners? rum runners. Okay. okay. We need to get some rum runners. We need to tell our producers we need some rum runners over yeah, here so we can nice. be authentic. Yeah, uh, you remember it's a kids' tournament. Yes. Well, I know the kids are going to provide that. Okay. Uh, we have injury timeout here. Uh, one of the players from Jamaica is down. Uh, I'd like to give a good shout out to uh, St. George's College of Jamaica. That's where the coach, Huntley Anderson, coaches. Um, and apparently this is his first head coach assignment this year uh, with the U19s uh, on a national level. So uh, a big shout to St. George's College of Jamaica. 
Guyana, uh, I was talking to John Lewis, their manager, and they have eight players that are fairly new to the sport of rugby. They've been playing for uh, less than a year. So, so far they've been doing fairly well against this more well-established Jamaican team. Yeah, and it seems like both countries are in that development stage right now. Um, definitely growing with over the years and uh, with major influences by expats coming over and uh, giving their love for the game and teaching. So you definitely can see that here today and all, all this week. What a hit by Patterson. Holy cow, great job. They still got it off. Guyana still with the ball, but a great counter-rucking by Jamaica as a turnover. Spinning it wide. Let's see if they can get something started here. Coming in from the side from Jamaica, that's going to be a penalty to Guyana. Boy, it seems like a lot of emotions riding high right now between the two countries out here. see what they do with this penalty kick now you have the option of tapping and going wow they are going for points ladies and gentlemen and this is going to be a long kick uh, almost 50 meters right here so once they kick the ball if it does not go out of bounds the ball is still in play so for Guyana they're going to need someone to chase this kick in case it stays in bounds you also have to be behind the kicker. Kick is up, and it is short, so it is playable. Jamaica going to run it out. They're clearing kick. Kicking deep inside Jamaica. The ball went backwards. That is okay. That's oh, pressure by guy. It's almost a pass there with that kick. Another clearing kick by Jamaica. Gathered by Guyana, the number 12. Really good decision making by both teams at this point. Turnover by Jamaica. Let's see if they get back to their strategy of the, the ground and pound. Coming in from the side from Guyana is the call. A quick tap by Jamaica, catching Guyana off guard. Guyana. Nice Good cutback hands. by the 13 of Jamaica. You know, the one thing you got to give Jamaica is really good support on that play right there. And really good for uh, Guyana to actually recycle on defense, come back and hold them up and make them cause a, a, a quick turnover. Advantage right now for a knock off of Jamaica. Let's see if Guyana. Seems like we got Jamaica down. Jamaican player is down. I think that's the number 10, Adrian Christie. Breakthrough, Guyana through that line. The number five. And a knock on by Guyana. Guyana. Excuse my southern brother here. So scrum down at midfield here at halfway line. 30 minutes into the first half. Jamaica leads at 14 to 6. The game has kind of opened up a little bit. Uh, a lot, we've seen a lot more kicking in the last five minutes, back and forth, back and forth. Let's see what happens at this this scrum in the center of the pitch. Jamaica, it's their put, and they've split their backs. Let's see which way they go. They're going the weak side here. There's a the eight man. Number eight man. With a pick and go. Oh, nice to the winner. Give and go there. Not rolling away from the tackler. Quick tap by Jamaica. 
And he keeps going. Guyana is not ready for this. So as you can see now, Jamaica's trying to take control of the game by just slowing it down a bit. Oh, and he's trying to do a cross field kick to their backs. Chris, I like the, the idea of that kick, but just the execution was off. Yes, the execution was off, a little bit off the mark of where he wanted to deliver it, but nevertheless, it was a good idea because they kept the defense isolated on one side and I uh, saw an opportunity. But that just shows you that they're watching really good rugby over the Super Rugby around the world and seeing what their uh, predecessors are doing right now. Well, you're right, and, and as you know, as a youth coach and, and myself as a youth coach, the challenge is, is to get the, your players to actually think of that idea because everything's going so crazy in these games and when you're first exposed to rugby it's just like you know everything's running at 100 miles an hour so uh, for them to be able to think about an opportunity like that for them to uh, to kick the ball uh, I would praise that that player for that idea but we just need to work on that execution yeah 100% Number eight from Guyana got it stolen away from uh, by Jamaica. They are on the attack. Jamaica setting up here. So you're gonna give it to their forwards again. Loses the ball. It's Guyana's ball, and they're taking it, spinning it wide here. Oh, a dummy pass. The nine, a good release. Good offload. Great good passing offloading. to 13, breaking away. Down to the 22, another offload to the winger. What Guyana has to do here is just keep possession the whole time and not make silly mistakes by rushing the ball and trying to move it. Really nice defense right there. Stopping him behind the gain line. Right. Jamaica was able to regroup quickly. Let's see what Jamaica does here while that player is isolated by Guyana. Giving it to the prop, Guyana takes it through a couple more yards, but stymied by the Jamaican defense. Here goes the lock, number five, he has two men open. Can he put it down? He's in the try zone. Oh no, he's just very close. What does the ref call it? The ref calls it held up. He did get into the try zone, but you have to physically touch the ball down. Hence the word touchdown. It came that football gave that, we gave that term to football, but he did not physically touch the ball down in the try zone. So that means it comes out a five meter scrum for Guyana. Yeah, that's a really good defense by Jamaica today. Uh, coming up there and really slowing them down in Guyana and really holding them up, uh, not letting them score at this point. First time we see Guyana really take it to Jamaica and push them back uh, while they're on offense. But you're right, Chris. Great defense by the Jamaican team. And as the Horn sounds for halftime. We'll see how long the referee plays this. This is probably going to be the last play of the half. Let's see if Guyana can punch it in here for a score. I'm predicting an eight-man pick to the right. What do you say? Okay. Um, I would, I'm going to predict he's passing it out to the backs. All so right, let's, let's see, see what how we go happens. here. Let's see. Okay, not in straight. He's going to redo it. He's going to re-kick it. He's going to push the scrum out a little bit farther, I think. The flow of the game has been really good today, uh, especially with these U19 kids. Really impressed with them. Really, really impressed. A lot of offloads, a lot of support play, a lot of communication. And, uh, you know, some of those are the uh, basics for what you need of, of playing rugby. Do you agree, Mark? Absolutely. I mean, this has been a very competitive game. Uh, we didn't really see that yesterday with two blowouts. 14-6 to Jamaica. Guyana on the door trying to score before halftime here. As he passes out to the winger coming up. 
Nice long body ruck. Jamaica definitely ready on defense. Once again, this is we're in extra time here, so if the ball goes out of bounds, it's pretty much the end of half. So Guyana has to score a breakthrough, the line by the number three from Guyana. Let's see if they can get inside in the try zone. A little pick and go. We got stopped by the Jamaican front side. The ball's held up, forming a ball right now. Pass the ball, going out wide. Let's see if they can get it wide to the oh, winger. Oh, he had some he space there. Inside. Oh, nice Great tackle by, by Jamaica. Eight. They That's get a turnover. Captain, number eight, Jamaica. If they get a turnover here, it's the end of the half. Well, ball's kept alive here. A penalty by Jamaica. I haven't figured out what it is yet. We'll see. We have a Jamaican player down. It looked like a situation of offsides, but I don't really, I can't really tell yet what, it, what exactly he called. Now, they will have a penalty. It's a penalty for them, and they'll probably take the points. They've been two for two, well, two for three on their, their penalty kicks so far. So let's see what they do now. If the ball goes out of bounds, then uh, it's probably the end of the half. Once again, we're in extra time of the first half of uh, this exciting match between Jamaica and Guyana. Well, it looks like Guyana's going to take the points here. Yep, they're going to take the points. Let's see if they can make it happen. 14-6 to 6 Jamaica right now. Kick is up and it's good. And that is halftime with your score. Jamaica 14, Guyana 8. A very exciting first half. We will be back shortly for the second half against with Guyana and Jamaica right here from Biscaya Park in Miramar, Florida. The 2016 Rugby America's North Championship.
Welcome back to the 2016 Rugby America's North Championship from Biscaya Park in Miramar, Florida, just north of Miami, where we're at halftime getting ready to start the second half of this great contest between Guyana and Jamaica. Jamaica is leading it right now 14 to 9. And Chris, how did you feel that the first half went? I felt the first half was very well by both teams. Jamaica at the start uh, trying to control the game and tr control the game line by just giving it to the forwards doing a pound and ground type uh, style. And uh, at the turn of events, they, uh, Guyana turned a, you know, a lot of turnover balls at the same time. Um, and Jamaica capitalized on it. But at the end, you know, Guyana came back and really, you know, showed a, a really a gut check in, that, in this one and also did the pound of ground and went out wide and, and expansive, you know, to come up uh, to force Jamaica into a penalty and then three points. Jamaica has been uh, very strong at the game line, but Guyana very resilient, and uh, that's why we have a very close game, 14-9, to nine, and your Rugby America's North Championship is sponsored by... DHL and KPMG, we thank you for your support of RAN Rugby. Also, the referee kit, game balls, and event tent supplied to us today by Canterbury, a proud sponsor of USA Rugby South and other uh, Rugby America's North news. Mexico has eliminated the Cayman Islands from the Rugby World Cup qualifiers. Now, this is the men's division. We are playing under 19 here, but the men's. So, the uh, Mexico will face Guyana in the championship rugby, rugby America's North Championship game, uh, and that is also a Rugby World Cup qualifier match as well. So that's going to be on July 23rd. The uh, Mexico defeating the Cayman Islands 34 to 24 yesterday afternoon in the men's division. As we get back to the start of the second half, Guyana is going to be kicking off to Jamaica, 14 to six Jamaica as we start the second half. Jamaica handling the ball, taking it up. And I've noticed, Chris, there's been taken several, two or three def Guyana defenders to for every of the Jamaican defenders. The pack is making a presence today. Yes, 100%, like we said, you know, different styles, different forms, but definitely the pound of ground is what they want to use to control this game today. They've been using the prop number three, uh, Matthew Patterson a lot. He's the, one of the biggest guys in the pack here, and he's been doing a lot of running here, this ground and pound offense they've been uh, implementing today. You guys are related, right? Uh, he is a brother from another mother. That's what I like. Yes. Yeah. Getting trippy at the break ground here. Mm, rough nice pass. pressure by Guyana. Oh. Jamaica knocked it forward, advantage to Guyana. Seems like Guyana is starting off really strong right now, really want to take it to Jamaica on their back foot. They do have space out wide. A lot of running left to right, which reduces that space for your players. That's something that uh, the coaches are definitely going to work on with them after this game. Yeah, you're 100% right on that, Mark. Uh, definitely when you run sideways, I remember coaches always telling us, run straight, run straight, run straight, uh, just because of the angles of what you're cutting down and the space that you're closing up for your other players to receive the ball. So no advantage gained on that knock-on by Jamaica, so we'll bring it back and have a scrum down to Guyana. Going weak side with it, number eight, man. Oh, we thought he got away. Jamaica still got him. Trying to get it wide. They do have space. Nice pass by the 12 over to the 13. Oh, couldn't make it to the winger there. They had a good thing going, but were not able to execute. Very upset by a guy in a good run by them. Good run, good attacking, good pressure, and way to move the ball out wide. 
and that was a great pass by their captain, uh, Daniel Diabru. De he, uh, that, the number 12 that was getting it wide. Uh, the 13 just could not connect for Guyana, and it looks like it's going to be a scrum down Jamaica due to the forward pass of Guyana. So, Chris, what do you think Jamaica's going to be doing right here? Uh, right now, I would definitely, for Jamaica's point, try to kick the ball out. Yeah, clearing definitely. kick. Clear kick. And, um, you know, even if they try to take it and run it out, let's see what they do here. Good call. Just right on that clearing kick. So we're going to have a line out to Guyana. Just a little bit inside the 10 meter of Jamaica. Scores 14 to 6. We're about six minutes into, excuse me, about four minutes into the second half here. Excuse me, 14 to 9. Uh, Jamaica currently over Guyana. Been kind of a, 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 a very even contest back and forth. Jamaica has been winning the, the game line with their ground and pound offense. They've been implemented. However, Guyana has been great at tackling. They have been numerous people tackling uh, and not just leaving up to one individual. Knocked forward in the line out uh, by Jamaica. So we will have a scrum down to Guyana. Let's see what Guyana does here. They're definitely set up for a back play here and they have some space out wide. So we'll see what happens. Here comes their winger coming in, the weak side winger coming up, grabs the ball, great play. However, it's knocked on in the tackle. That was a good play by Guyana, definitely trying to catch uh, Jamaica looking inside uh, at different channels and come outside and look for wide and, and, and collapse defense right in the middle. I think once they get it out to their wingers uh, for Guyana, that's what their whole attempt was trying to do to play an expansive rugby and catch them off guard. I do like that play, Chris, because what you're doing is you got that weak side man coming in, and usually he's unaccounted for, and not if he, if he breaks it, great, but if he doesn't, you know, you already have an overload outside because that the weak side winger is never not accounted for. That is correct. Now we have an injury on the field to Jamaica. Uh, taking a water break here. And for those of you who are not unfamiliar with uh, Guyana, the country, it is actually in South America and it's right beside Venezuela. So you have Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, and then French Guiana. Uh, now I did ask their manager, John Lewis, uh, the Guyana manager, and I said, well, if you're in uh, the Southern Hemisphere, then why do you play for Rugby America's North instead of Rugby America's South or the RAS? And he said, because they associate themselves more with the Caribbean uh, versus South America because of their uh, English speaking versus the rest of South America is mostly Portuguese or Spanish. And and I really appreciated that when I was interviewing them because I do not speak Spanish or yes. Portuguese, Chris. <laughs> and so I know that you interviewed the Jamaican team and you being from Jamaica, um, always when I interview Jamaicans, I have to tell them to slow down a little bit because uh, their accent is like uh, very challenging when they're speaking very, very fast. Yes, it's a different dialect. You know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> yes. Uh, Irie. <laughs> is everything Irie, Chris? Everything Irie. Yes. But, no, it's a blessing, you know, uh, definitely the dialect is something you have to get used to. And, and I'm trying to get used to your dialect. Uh, where are you from, Southern America? <laughs> you don't have a multitude of dialects, Yes, Chris. I noticed okay. that. I noticed that. A multitude of dialects. So you, don't hear, you don't hear very much of the North Carolina coming out uh, while, I'm on, while I'm on air. Oh, you're from North Carolina? <laughs> How could you tell? Oh, man. Well, okay. there you go. There, there you he go. is, right there. there. Right there. So a scrum down here uh, for Guyana based on the knock-on from Jamaica. Uh, Rugby's America's North would like to thank our partners DHL and KPMG for their support of RAN Rugby. 14-9, we are 
15 minutes in, excuse me, six minutes into this second half of the first trophy division game between Guyana and Jamaica. We will see Bahamas be playing later in the week. Ball pass out. The Bahamas won the scrum down. They're taking it out wide, and they're getting a great run from their winger here, fending off multiple defenders. They have the ruck, giving it to the big man, Patterson, and he gets stymied in the ruck and the tackle. Well, let's see what kind of discipline Jamaica has here, either to control the game and look looks what they're doing by bringing up the big man. Definitely just set the tempo at the breakdowns. It seems that they can't, if they would come right off the ruck. There you go, now they're spinning it wide. It went backwards, a kick. And another kick by the winger. Mm, that looks like a penalty right there. Absolutely. Playing the man and not the ball. You see the ball was not in the, the player's hands, and he still played the man, so that's going to be a penalty on Guyana. See if they're going to go for points or what they're going to do in the penalty here. They are going for points. And the man with the best haircut and color in this whole tournament right now, Adrian Christie, the number 10, pointed to the posts. Let's see if he's going to take this kick. Nope, it looks like the number 14, Miguel Facey, is going to be taking this. His brother is the scrum half, Michael. The number nine. They're up by five. Let's see. This will increase their lead to 17 to nine if he makes it here. Kick is up. Ooh, does it have the distance? Uh, no, it was short. Wow. I thought from this vantage point that he made it, but he did not make it. It was short. Short kick. So we have a 22 drop. Here it comes. There goes a 22 drop. Great kick by the number 12. After that kick, Miguel looked disappointed. Right, he did. But that's the one thing in rugby. You can't linger on the previous play. You got to keep playing. You got to keep going. Another run by Patterson up the gut. Actually, that was uh, to Jay Wallace. An up, a box kick by the number nine, putting pressure. The 15 was up. And it went into the try zone. He touched it down. That's going to be a 22 drop. That's a really good smart play by the Guyana. Nine. Absolutely, yes. W willing to recognize where the 15 was and knowing that there was no one back there in the backfield. Great vision by the number nine there, uh, Michael Facey. So the 22 drop, it has to touch the ground. So watch, he's going to do a drop kick here. Went backwards, out of his hands. That's okay. You can kick the ball any way you want to. We've had a lot of really powerful collisions here, Chris, today. Yeah, definitely, with the big boys coming in there hard. Diana taking it up here. Another phase. Good low tackle by Jamaica. Seems that he's shaking up. Number 10 on the play, Adrian Christie. He gets back up, though. Oh, a steal by Jamaica. Taking it up again. The ground and pound. They've been staying with it the whole game. They've been maintaining the line of scrimmage. Ah, oh, they'll try to grubber kick, and that was not successful. They still maintain possession, though. Trying to get it out wide now. 
They went backwards. They still maintain possession. They're not going in the right direction, though. Oh, they got the break on the Y. They're going wide. They got the numbers right here. Oh, a stiff arm. Another stiff arm by Jamaica. Down to the 22 of Guyana. Nice support play by Jamaica. Guyana's having to do a lot of defending right here. It's definitely going to wear them out. That ball is out. Oh, no. Looks like coming in from the side of the ruck. That's a penalty to Jamaica right around the 22 of Guyana. Uh, it is offsides. He called offsides. A quick tap by Jamaica. They are not back 10, Guyana. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so... Not back 10 is what the referee's calling. That's a penalty. Another, there's no quick tap because it's already been one. You can only have one quick tap. Not back 10. So once he taps the ball, we'll go here. The ball is live. They're taking it up, giving it to the big boys. Let's see. And it is a try. Pound try ground Jamaica. With the big boys. From the number one to Jay Wallace. Driving it home, and Chris, you got to think that drive with all the defending that Guyana did definitely kind of made that try possible. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, definitely a, a good session by the Jamaican side, really keeping possession and just really pounding ground in it all the way up through. And, of course, at the end, the big boys get rewarded for all their hard work in the front. So good job by, by the loose Looks like the ground and pound has been working for Jamaica. They've been wearing down their opponent here, Guyana, and uh, they, they spun it wide, was able to get a lot of, of yardage with their, uh, their wide play, and then they finished it off with uh, the run right up the middle by the number one to Jay Wallace for the try and the five points. As you can tell, he's being, being tended to. I don't know if that's him or another uh, defend, uh, player. And the extra point was up, and it was no good. Extra point, no good. So now they have widened their lead. It's 19-9 to and 13 minutes into the, the second half here. Jamaica is taking a 10-point lead, and the, the weather has actually cooled off a little bit. We've got a little cloud cover, so it's not as hot as it was earlier. But, however, you're starting to see, I notice on uh, that attack, that not only was Guyana uh, walking a lot, so was Jamaica, Chris. Yes, no, they were. I mean, definitely when you're playing uh, consecutive uh, uh, sessions, you know, definitely trying to move the ball up, you're definitely about to wear down. And especially the big guys up in the front, you know, if you keep attacking them there, they're definitely, someone's got to break. Right. And just remember both of these teams, this is the first game they played against uh, uh other opponents or another side so that fatigue is going to set in they're not used to playing at this level for this long we haven't seen too many substitutions either Chris no not as yet I know it's a long week of week of competition right so I'm sure there, that plays into the factor there if you want to get in touch with us just hashtag ran super week from Facebook or Twitter Jamaica taking it up, and looks like, yeah, they're getting through. They're starting to get through this defensive line of Guyana with their big boys pounding it. But you got to give credit to the Guyana. Uh, Guyana, they are doing very well on defense for the amount of times that Jamaica has been running right up to them. Jamaica taking control of this possession right here. Really setting the tempo. They're still going to the weak side. They're pushing straight over to the weak side, weak side. They have a full back line set up, ready to go. Unforced error right there. Absolutely. Knock on by Jamaica. They had all the momentum there, and they kind of gave it away with that knock on. Scrum down Guyana. We do have an injury on the field, uh, which will give me a little time to tell you about the rest of our RAND Super Week, the 2016 Rugby America's North Championship. Day two today, we're seeing the second half right here of Guyana and Jamaica. Tomorrow, a doubleheader on slate 
4 and 6 o'clock, our first match from Pool A is the Cayman Islands versus Turks and Caicos. The Caymans, that'll be their first match of the tournament. Cayman Islands, they did uh, end up having a loss yesterday to Mexico and uh, did not score a, a point. So they're definitely going to look to get on the board against the Cayman Islands. And our nightcap at 6 o'clock, Pool B, Trinidad and Tobago, that's going to be their first match of the tournament versus Bermuda, which they lost to the USA South yesterday, 41-0. The contest in Super Week continues on Tuesday with uh, Jamaica versus the Bahamas. Wednesday, me doubleheader again, Mexico versus Cayman Islands, and the USA South versus Trinidad and Tobago. And Thursday, we have uh, our women's tournament. We have a women's tent tournament, first one in Iran history. Uh, we have Bahamas, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago versus the Bahamas, and then uh, the South versus Jamaica. USA South women versus uh, the Jamaican women on that tens tournament. So the women's tens tournament will be on Friday and Saturday, and then our finals will be uh, all day on Saturday. We've got four games slated for you on this Saturday, July 16th. Coming back to the action here on the field, we have a scrum down Guyana. Ball is not in straight. So we'll just replay it. We'll, we'll tee it back up again. Once again, this is the trophy division. And uh, you have two divisions here. You have a cup division made of six teams. And you have a trophy division made of three teams. Usually the, the top six teams are in the cup division, and that's based on last year's standings. And uh, the trophy division are the bottom three teams. So the winner of this division will move up next year to the Cup Division. Guyana, this is the first time in four years they've been to uh, Rugby America North Championship. So they're looking back to get back onto the winning side. And then Jamaica, uh, they took last year off, and so this is the, the, the year they've, uh, they've come back, and they're definitely looking to make their presence known here. And they, so far they have. They have. 19-9, to nine, up by 10 with about 18 minutes left to go in the game. Coming from you from Vizcaya Park in Miramar, Florida. It's just north of Miami. And another put in by Guyana. Looks like offsides by Jamaica as a penalty kick to Guyana. Let's see what they do here. Oop, we're going to kick for touch. It did not go out of bounds, so the ball is still live. Jamaica recovers. And that is obstruction. obstruction. You cannot run behind your own player. It's almost like a block in football. You cannot do that in rugby. Penalty to Guyana. All right, so they kicked it out, and that's going to be a line out to Guyana. So, Chris, can you explain to me the philosophy of this, the ground and pound, kind of what Jamaica does and how that opens up the game for them and what, and what that philosophy does to for them? So what they're trying to do is pretty much collapse the defense. So if they keep the ball within the forwards, uh, it will suck in the defense. And if they do it tactfully and, and, and precise to where they need to go and get the right numbers sucked in defensively, uh, offensively it's open up wide and they can run an expansive game. Uh, definitely to force Guyana to make mistakes or not be there in time and keep what, like we say in rugby, you know, keep it on your back foot because you're always having to run backwards to, to recycle and reset on defense. Guyana wins their own line out. They're taking it out, spinning it wide here. Can they get it to the edge? No. Jamaica making the tackle. Knocked backwards, still in play. Oh, nope. The referee's going to say that was not forward. So it's going to be scrum down Jamaica. At this point, Guyana needs to keep their composure and definitely keep possession as well. You know, really have runners that really want to hold the ball and move forward and keep possession. But right here, they're just throwing the ball up and guys aren't ready to receive the ball. You know, in this game of rugby, you just got to be ready at every point, every time. You know, it seems that the, the defense of Jamaica is controlling the Guyana, uh, Guyana's offense. And so they're not really been able to do anything. 
uh, except a couple breakaways in the first half. We really haven't seen anything in this second half. It's been all Jamaica here. Yeah, no, definitely 100% pressure by Jamaica defensively. Oh. Hit him in a bad place, Chris, the hands. The hands. Yeah, so incomplete with that uh, throw and catch there, that pitch. So it's going to be a knock on by Jamaica. Let's see if Guyana can take advantage of this opportunity that uh, Jamaica has given them here. Fifteen minutes left in this game. Jamaica up by 10, 19 to 9. Guyana is attacking here just inside the 10 meters of Jamaica. Nice eight-man pick by Guyana. Off to the 10. Nice passing wide. Oh. oh. Really good play by Guyana. As you can see, that eight-man off that pickup, right. he kind of went out and still looped to create an overload for the outside. So that's a good play by Guyana. Good look on the hard, good defense, though. Definitely to get the hands inside the pass. What the referee called was an intentional knock on by Jamaica. You can't get up and smack it with your hand and, and hit it uh, if you're on the defense. So they've called a penalty. Guyana is going for a penalty kick. That's going to be worth three if made. And you cannot rush the ball when you have a penalty kick either on the defense. And that is no good. It went out of bounds. So what they're going to have is a 22 drop by Jamaica. Nobody is back for, Jam for Guyana. Now they're getting back. At this point of the game, uh, Mark, I definitely Guyana needs to keep possession after this. Guyana needs to get something going uh, in order to. Now, nobody's over there. Look at this. Oh, he's kicked the other way. They had plenty of guys, Guy Guyana did. Now look at the pressure by the Jamaican. They are coming. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that is off not the what he wanted to do Side of the there. foot. That was a shank, but Guyana still maintaining possession. There's a kick that's going a little deep. Get some pressure off, and that is. Uh, did you see the number two from Guyana? He just didn't understand the rule. You have to be behind the kicker, and he was not. And so that is a penalty. Quick tap from Jamaica. Going wide, Ten taking it himself. Oh, and a knock forward. Chris, I thought they had something going there. I thought so too, thought so too. But uh, once again, you know, you just have to time your runs and also just have patience and, and, you know, listen to your support. Right, this first game for both of these teams, they're definitely, the execution is not gonna be there. You'll probably see a lot more execution by the third game of the tournament. But right now, it's uh, it's been a little bit uh, sketchy, so to speak, with the skill levels. But I do like the ideas. They do have the right ideas, uh, just they're not executing right now, either team. Now, Jamaica has been uh, putting on the pressure most of this second half. Yes, they have, and, and really not get Guyana uh, to get a rhythm or a tempo throughout the game. But Guyana had this chance down here uh, just recently, and uh, just unfortunate uh, they had to turn over ball. Yeah, Guyana not doing a great job of taking advantage of opportunities when presented to them, and Jamaica's been opposite. They've been taking care of these uh, turnovers and, and missed opportunities by Guyana. Wind has died down here. Uh, as uh, the sun moves behind the clouds here at Biscaya Park in Miramar, Florida, just north of Miami. Scrum down to Guyana. Let's see what happens here. Oh, no, Jamaica has it. Looks like they're spinning it wide. The winger is wide open if they can get it to him, and no. Unable to get it. They still have an overload. Oh, they're passing out to the winger wide. Oh, he falls down. Still maintaining possession. The nine gets it, he goes wide. Oh, another pass, handoff, and a try. Try by number by Jamaica. 21 of Jamaica. That is Alvin Gordon 
and great ball movement. We didn't know if they were going to be able to get it wide, but great ball movement by Jamaica. Yes, it was good. Good support play by uh, Jamaica. Definitely to score that, that try at the end. Good work. First time we've really seen them get it wide, at least on this side of the field by our, our broadcast tent all afternoon. And uh, they were able to execute here. Now it's gonna be a challenging point after try here. It's not going to make the mark. However, they have widened their lead with 10 minutes left in the game. Jamaica 24, Guyana 9. And Chris, Jamaica's been, he, they've kept Guyana out of the try zone all day so far. All day. It's been a, been a tough day for Guyana. They had really great opportunities and missed with a lot of turnovers. And, uh, you know, that makes a difference in the game. And definitely if they had you know, the opportunity to kick for point, but Jamaica just keep pressuring them and force, forcing these errors. Well, manager uh, Jerry Benswick of Jamaica, he did say that they are going to rely on this uh, rucking game, the possession, and they have maintained the possession. They've, he's been true to his word, and, that, and that's what they've done this, this first game of the Rugby American World Championship. Diana kicking off. Ooh, big hit by Guyana there. Jamaica still maintaining possession in the ruck. Pounding it up. Patterson, the big three man here. The lock, uh, the, the prop. Trying nice to get step. something on the short side of the field here. Jamaica does. It went backwards. Looks like they've gone out, so Guyana will have it. Eight minutes left here in this game. The first one of the trophy round of this 2016 Rugby America's North Championship. Don't forget we have a double header uh, in store for you tomorrow. When two groups uh, from the cup round, Pool A and Pool B, Cayman Islands takes on Turks and Caicos at four. And then our nightcap is going to be Trinidad versus uh, Trinidad and Tobago versus Bermuda. Line out to Guyana. They got possession. Good defense by Jamaica. Really good defense. They're just all up in their face, not having nowhere to go. But Chris, once again, this side to side running from both teams. Is yes really limiting their offense. You know, Patterson I, I, up the middle again. I believe that comes with experience, you right. know, definitely these guys, you know, uh, both countries uh, are just in their development stage and have a lot of young guys right. within the youth. So, you know, as, as years come and, and more games they play and get to travel, um, they'll uh, definitely, I'll see more improvement from years to come. What a great experience for these kids. I mean, 17, 18, 19 years old, able to come to the United States and play rugby. You know, it's definitely something they'll remember for the rest of their lives. Oh, of course, 100%. And, and these guys, you know, it's just it's good for them to grow. You know, when you put on your country's crest, right. it's the best thing, you know. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, I never got the chance to do that. But, you know, definitely I understand how it is to do that. And these guys are well represented out of here. Well, maybe you can make the over 45 national team, Chris. Well, I'm trying to do the touch in the national uh, Senior USD. citizen? Is yes. that what a senior yes, citizen? I, I didn't know we had a senior citizen yes. touch team. Yes, we do. Wow. Okay. Yes. Keep me posted on that. There's three touches. Okay. Is that what it is? Yes. Let's see if he calls a knock. Yes, it's going to be a knock by Jamaica here. Six minutes left in this battle. Jamaica leading 24 to 9. Let's see if Guyana can light a spark and uh, get into the try zone to, to uh, see if they can get back into this game. And now, you know, Mark, watching this from the sideline here and seeing the players, uh, you definitely see the profile. Jamaica's has size over Guyana. Right. Definitely on the wings as well as in the pack. So, you know, uh, Jamaica really recognizes that and, and is taking full advantage of it. 
they have been wearing down this Guyana team, but they stuck in it and they, they've uh, represented their countries. Both teams have represented their countries very well today. Nice tackle by Jamaica. Gana attacking here, going weak side. And it went out. We have Daniel uh, Diabru. Dia uh, he's the captain down right now for Guyana. But quick ball out from Jamaica off the line out. If he can get it wide, he's got something going here. Guyana recovers very well. Ooh, high tackle right around the neck. Penalty for Jamaica. Quick tap by Jamaica. Let's see what he does here. Looks like they got numbers. Oh, bad pass, but it went backwards. So they still have possession. Oh, knocked forward. That's advantage. Guyana. You know, with the high tackle, it's a good uh, recognition by the referee definitely to keep the game safe. And that's one of the things that the IRB uh, internationally and nationally trying to keep safe is definitely watching out for that high tackle. Anything above the shoulder, right, Mark? Absolutely. Anything above the shoulder. And let me tell you, this, this referee corps uh, has been great today. Uh, we've seen very good refereeing. Uh, this is sometimes it's challenging for these uh, developing countries when, when uh, some of these kids just don't know how to play. Uh, play the sport, but um, it's been a very well officiated game today. Uh, it's been a little sloppy, but that's kind of what you can expect from uh, two countries that uh, haven't really played a lot and the fact that both of these teams, it's the first time they've seen uh, live competition uh, against a, a separate country. Uh, 24 to 9, it's uh, about four minutes left in the game. Uh, if uh, Guyana doesn't pull a rabbit out of their hat here. It looks like Jamaica's going to walk away with this first match. But once again, this is this is Ran Super Week. If you want to get in touch with us, you can just hashtag Ran Super Week on Facebook or Twitter to get in touch with us. And we have a lot more action for the rest of the week. Uh, tomorrow, I got a doubleheader: uh, Cayman Islands and versus Turks and Caicos at four, and then at six, Trinidad and Tobago versus Bermuda. We'll be very interested to see what Trinidad and Tobago uh, brings to the table. They're always usually one of the strong teams in this tournament every year. It'll be their first game versus Bermuda. Bermuda uh, took a loss yesterday to the USA South, 41-0. So they're going to look back, look to uh, get on the winning side ways uh, tomorrow. A lot of rugby for the week, Mark. A lot of rugby here at Rand Super Week from Vizcaya Park in Miramar, Florida just north of Miami. Yeah, I remember when we were younger, Mark, we'd love to play rugby every day. Absolutely. At this level. Of course, our bodies can't take it now every day. Well, maybe a tournament. Well, speak for yourself, okay? Okay, okay whatever, all right? <laughs> I still play rugby, and I still ball out, okay? I still ball out, okay? That's right. See ya. Right. Uh, man down, it looks like, for Jamaica. Yeah. So we have a, a another uh, commentator coming in. His, game's Ga his name is Gavin McLevy. He is uh, the uh, – the, who's the channel he's on? He's on? Oh, the BN Sports BN Network. Sports Network, Channel yes. 220 on DirecTV. DirecTV. And so he does all the rugby commentating. And so I'll have to get him to explain the – uh, old boys match we were in where I blew by him for 50 meters uh, recently, Chris. 
Yes, he, he told me what happened, that yes. the sun and the reflection off somebody's shades right. kind of blinded him and he didn't get a chance to see Is you. Is that what he told you? That's what he said. Okay. I don't recall it being exactly like that, Chris. Well, hey, <laughs> listen. But we'll have to see what uh, what he has to say about that no, you had a later in the week. You had a good run. I've, I've had the pleasure of playing it many games with you and uh, winning many challenges. So I, I definitely doubt that it was the sunglasses. I think he just tried right. to wear a blade of grass. Or something right, like exactly, Chris. Three minutes left in this one, 24-9 to nine, Jamaica. We'll see what Guyana does, Guyana does here on this scrum down, giving to him from a knock on of, by Jamaica. And if anyone's interested as listening on this broadcast, uh, liferunningeagles.com. If anyone's interested in coming to school to learn in chiropractic, sports management, or business, uh, and also to play rugby at a high level in the States, get good fundamentals, uh, liferunningeagles.com. Life University out of Marietta, Georgia. That's where you played your rugby, didn't you, Chris? That is correct. Steal by Jamaica. Going out wide, oh, losing the ball, but it went backwards. Let's see if they can do something with it in the final minutes of the game here. Oh, going to kick down into the corner. Fullback's running after it. And he touches the ball down. It's going to be a 22 drop for Guyana. And the closing minutes of the game here. forward on the catch. Possession is key. Unfortunate event. Guyana retains ball. So shortly after uh, when the game ends, we're going to have the winning coach and a couple of his players over here uh, on the broadcast. First game of the trophy division, day two of the 2016 Rugby America's North Championship. Once again, we'd like to give thanks to our partners, DHL and KPMG, for their support of RAN Rugby. Guyana getting the ball out, eight-man pickup. The final hooter is sounded. Let's see if Guyana can get into the try zone this last time. One more. Ooh. Ooh. High tackle did not bring the player down safely. That is a penalty. So those are another issues that the IRB wanted to address on safety out there on the field. So the player, his, his hips cannot come above his shoulder in any tackle, so which will deem it unsafe, and then it deems a penalty. So good call by the referee and by the, by the coaching officials. officials. Isn't that the same thing, a referee official? That is correct. Isn't that redundant? I'm just making it official. Oh, are you? Okay. Yes. It's very official. Referee official. You could just say official, couldn't you? Or could you say referee? It's very official right now. Is it? Okay. Just checking. All right. Hopefully they can they can get something going here in this last minute, getting to the try zone. Uh, they have not scored a try today. It's been all uh, penalty kicks. They're driving with the ball here. Once again, this is the last play of the game. If the ball goes out of bounds, the game is over. But you know, I gotta say, Mark, I'm really impressed with both sides. Right. On and off the ball, definitely moving and definitely putting their heart together for each other. Definitely. Gana breaking through their fullback, getting down to about the five meter from the try line. Let's see if they can punch it in. Guyana not giving up at all. Showing their fight to the last second of this game. Really showing a lot of uh, face play here at this small series at the time ending. 
being relentless with keeping possession and also trying to look for that gap. Oh, and Jamaica is able to get the steal and clears it. And that is the game. Jamaica takes the victory, the first game in the trophy division. 24 to nine, Jamaica comes away with the victory. We will have a couple of the players and the coaches over here on the Rugby America's North Championship Network shortly. And wow, impressive game, Chris, from both Jamaica and Guyana. Yeah, like we said at the beginning, you know, Jamaica said they were gonna come in take control of the game, use the ground and pound, use the, the forwards to run it up, and really set the precedence by doing that. And as it showed today, they had the tempo and they controlled it. And definitely didn't give a chance to Guyana to uh, have get their rhythm and move the ball out wide. For sure, I, I was very impressed uh, by both of these teams and not only um, the play, but just the heart. I mean, you saw Guyana, they knew they would lost the game, but they were trying to get into that end to, into the try zone and uh, you know, touch one down. But uh, they're unable to, but they will, they will definitely take this and learn from it and figure out what they need to do in order to uh, get to the win column uh, next time against the Bahamas, which will be their, their next game as well. Uh, we have some of the Jamaican coaches and players coming over right now, so we will interview them as I move my microphone out here. All right. So as they end up walking over here, I'm going to interview our, our players from Jamaica. So we have our manager, Jerry Benswick, coming over here. If I can talk to Jerry first. And Jerry, congratulations on the victory. Thank you, uh, you know, you and I were talking. Go ahead and face right here. You and I were talking earlier uh, about your your strategy today mm -hmm. and uh, about ground and pound. And wow, you guys definitely lived up to it. Tell us a little about your strategy, how you changed it from previous years, and how it worked out today. It was our coach, the magician, Mr. Huntley. Kudos to him. He has gotten this team so disciplined that it is unbelievable. We've always played a running game, pass, run, try to be creative. And he has taken them from that mindset and put everybody in a frame of mind where we're going to have one game plan, we're going to pound it out, get them tired, and keep pounding it, and then they'll give way. And it worked. It, it definitely did. Chris Vassell and I were also were seeing this as well, showing just uh, you guys said you were going to stick to this game plan, and you definitely did. Yes. And it looks like not only you kind of, um, you kind of softened the defense up, mm -hmm. but you were able, once you got it wide, you were able to execute. Yes, our backs are very good. They're very experienced. I think we got a little problem with our handling in the back because they haven't been doing a lot of that. So now we're going to have to get them more in tune to passing and being creative again because we've gotten so disciplined with hitting and driving that, right. you know, we forgot, oh, yeah, our backs need to be good again. So we're probably going to give them some more practice passing going forward. Well, you told me it was y'all's first game as a group, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it also showed with your uh, competitor there was kind of a sloppy game with uh, passes and stuff like mm -hmm. that, but definitely something that you can you can make, you can can uh, work on in the, in the next coming days uh, before your next match. But once again, great victory and great job uh, from the much. manager and the coaching staff. Thank you. Thank now let's you, get you. these big boys in yeah, here as yeah. well. So we have, uh, uh, let's see, is this Matthew Patterson yeah. uh, right here? Yes. Okay. The brother from another mother. I'm Mark Patterson as well. So, yeah. so uh, Matthew, I, I, I wanted to do, to uh, talk to you. You guys, uh, it's I've seen Jamaica play numerous times, and uh, this is the most uh, pounding in that pack that that I have ever seen. And you, uh, I bet you had about 50 runs today uh, running through the pack. Tell me about what you guys, your strategy was, and and how you were able to uh, to execute it here today. Just basic rugby. Okay. Little, so when you were uh, when you were running the ball off the pack, were you looking at a certain defender uh, to crash into and to make contact with, or were you trying to to run through the gap, or what was your philosophy? Coach, tell me to always run through the gap. Okay. Weaken them. Right. And so uh, when 
it seemed like you didn't even lose. You 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 must be fit because you were running the whole game. Didn't seem to to mind. I know that I played numerous games and uh, to run that much, definitely you would uh, be fatigued. But it didn't seem that you had much fatigue at all. Well, actually, I have asthma. <laughs> Really bad, and really bad. Two time attacks and I didn't want to come off. Didn't want to let nobody down. But I had no one to prove anything to the, but my mom. Hey, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> and I just let it pass, breathe, my breathing. And actually, I didn't do many rugby games. I haven't been playing rugby for, I've been only playing rugby for a few months. Wow. Eight That's, wow, eight months. Well, Patterson, you did a fantastic job. I want to shake your hand. You did an incredible job for your very first, is this your first international game? Great cap for you. That that was fantastic. Now let's bring your captain in here, right? And this is Layla. So I asked your I, I asked your manager if he heard that song Layla, uh, uh, and uh, but obviously he hadn't. But you go by uh, that's your nickname, Layla, right? That's my, that's my, that's my nickname. So Layla, how do you feel that your team did today, Jamaica? I think we executed very well. We were given certain instructions. We we took it out there and we pounded, we pounded, we pounded, we pounded, and we wore them down. It's a rocking game that we are playing. The I my coach believes that rugby is centered around rocking. Rocking keeps possession of the ball and it also weakens your opponents. The hitting, the constant hitting, wears them down. So that 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 amount that, that allows you to get them to break down and you you put it out. And when you put the ball out, you get your backs running. We have very we have very very fast backs, so we could execute that. So this philosophy, is it new in, uh, in, in your, when you've been playing, this is the first time I've seen this philosophy from a Jamaican team. Is this something that was hard for you to get behind initially because you've never done it before? Or because I usually play a free-flowing game where you pass the ball out a lot. Was there any hesitation to switch the game plan from the players themselves? Uh, there wasn't any hesitation. There wasn't, we, we are very, firstly, we are a very adaptive team. We are very adaptive people. What my coach is getting into our heads as gentlemen or as growing, growing young men is that you have to learn to, to accept change. Change is good at times. You have to understand that change is good. The thing is, you, you have pointed out to us, to us that it is the first that you are seeing um, Jamaicans play rugby like this. And we, that's, that's, that's it. We, we, we realized that it wasn't working. You can't do anything over and over and over again. Albert Einstein said you just do something over and over again and expect a different result. You're a madman. Right. So we, we sat down and we, my coach himself, the magician himself, sat down and he, he, watched, he watched rugby matches endlessly, night after night, sleepless nights, and he got it out there. He, he, he grasped what was being done, what worked, what, what you, have, you can't just look into your team, you have to look into the other teams. You have to look how to, how to beat other teams. He's a, he's a very big tactician. Absolutely. Layla, and you couldn't have said it any better. I'm very impressed about how you guys switched up your uh, – I've always seen you guys play a fast flow uh, game like in the sevens, but you've always had challenge in uh, being competitive against the bigger sides because the pound and ground, the ground and pound, and you guys have totally changed your tactics. Good credit to your coach, Huntley Anderson, and great execution by the boys today. Jamaica walks away with their first victory of their Rugby America's North Championship here defeating Guyana, so they are on their way. And when's the next, what day do you guys play? Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. Okay, their next match is Wednesday, and that's going to be it for us. I'm Mark Patterson signing off for today from the Rugby Americas Championship. We will see you tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Have a great evening. Yeah.